So let's get started talking about the economics calendar. Now, in tonight's class, I'm going to use the term security when referring to tradable financial instruments. This includes stocks, bonds, commodities, futures, indices, mutual funds, but I'm not actually talking about any specific, specific investment product. It just gets very boring saying security, security, security. So when I say Bitcoin or I say Facebook or I say Google, I'm, I'm just using them as generic terms. Similarly, I'm going to intermix the terms of investing and trading. Now, since we're all here by ETX, we are traders. Yeah, but we know the difference. But again, it gets very boring saying trading, trading, trading. So I might say investing, but we're all talking about trading CFDs on the ETX platform. Now, the economics calendar is a fundamental analysis tool for traders to position themselves to take advantage of future currency moves. The economics calendar is published for each day. And the economics calendar enables traders to keep track of economic indicators and economic events and political events that impact currency movements as well as stock markets that affect oil and gold that affect almost everything that you can trade. Now, when I started trading 45 years ago, yeah, and that's a long time ago, this economic data was virtually impossible to get your hands on. Because we didn't have computers, we didn't have internet, we didn't have, I mean, we didn't even have fax services in the very beginning. So when the USDA would release its crop estimates, okay, you couldn't get it because there was no way to communicate it. So if you had somebody who had access to the USDA accounting office or statistic office, you could go in and get it. So most of this stuff was sent to us by mail. We'd get it, you know, a next day or two days. Sometimes we'd get it through headlines and papers, but there was no really up to the minute financial, there's no internet newspapers. So, or we'd get it via some headline feed through our ticker tape that we were watching or the data feed we were getting in a broker's office. But that was the extent of it. So the markets moved a lot slower. But it gave big trading houses an edge because they had a way of getting this data. You know, they had an office in South America. So when there was a... a a strike of port workers, so we knew the oranges couldn't get out of South America and that orange juice prices would, would spike in the US. Okay, I wouldn't get it, you wouldn't get it, but the big traders from the big fund houses, because they had somebody who was on their payroll in Brazil and anything like that, he'd call on the phone or send a wire right away to the trading desk. Today, we're now on an even keel because we all get the information just as fast as everybody else. And we get this information by live data feeds. And it comes into what we call economics calendars. Okay, I'm going to pop a live one up on your screen. Okay, so right now we're looking at the live economics calendar from FX Street. Okay. I'm going to pop over and we're going to take a look at this is the live economics calendar from investing.com but let's bop back and forth back and forth they don't look similar but they're identical basically all of these events are pre-programmed and they're all listed on importance level because all of the data or almost all the data for these calendars come through data feeds and these data feeds are the same everybody else everybody's getting so what happens is it gets a little confusing is that these economic calendar providers can do graphics. They can adjust the way you're seeing it, but all the data is coming in automatically through feed. So we can see on the FX street calendar right here, first event tomorrow is at 0130 is out of Japan and it affects the Japanese yen. And it's the Bank of Japan's Masai, whatever, I, however you say it, Japanese speech. 
Well, if we go over the economics calendar for from investing.com, guess what? We got the same piece of information. Then we go down to 02 o'clock and we have from New Zealand, we have the interest rate decision. Guess what we have over here? Two o'clock, the interest rate decision. Now, if we notice on FX Street, we have what they call their volatility. Okay. Now, we can use the word volatility. We can use the word importance. Some use the word tier because these are tiers. All economics that is rated in tiers. So the difference between these two is there's only tier one, tier two, tier three events, and then non-economic events. So when this data is fed into the FX Street site, it tells its computer, <coughs> if it's a level two, make it orange. If it's a level three, make it red. Okay. Now on the investing.com site, it says, okay, they use bullheads and they call it impact or importance. But guess what? Instead of colors, they use bullheads. So they've told their computer, if you get a level three, put three bullheads out there. So that's what I'm saying. It's the same data, all coming from data feeds around the globe. Now, there is some minor data that comes from, most of the data comes from government agencies. But there are also private agencies like HSBC. There is, um, you, you know, the, sometimes Reuters issues data. There's the ADP payroll report that's issued by a private company in the U.S. Associated data processing or whatever it is. Okay. So there are private reports. Like if we get the oil inventory reports down here. Okay. These come from the, uh, the it is actually, it's actually an association of oil company of the, the inventory, but it comes from the government accounting. But they all come from, if they don't come from government sources, they're coming from like Thomson Reuters, okay, HSBC. Now, when they issue these pieces of data, okay, they push them out through the data feeds also. Now, keep in mind that people like companies like Thomson Reuters and HSBC, they have to make money. So, they also offer a subscription service and you're a subscriber, what happens? And nobody hides anything. There's nothing illegal. They push the data out to a subscriber 10 or 15 seconds before it goes out to the data feeds in the world. Same data, but as a subscriber who's paying thousands of dollars a year for these subscriptions, okay, they, the companies can make money. Now for us, it doesn't really affect anything. Yeah, if you're a big bank who's trading, you know, currencies and trading billions of dollars of currency, yeah, you want that one little leg up, but it doesn't help any of us. And today, everything is so fast. And since we're trading CFDs, you know, it, it, it's not, and we're not trading multi-billions of dollars. So one tiny pip difference in an asset or, or controlling an asset doesn't have much of an effect on us. But you have to understand what the kind of difference is. So we start out looking at the counter. We're going to, uh, let's use the FX street. I like FX street first. Now, the first thing we see on almost all calendars. Now the columns can be mixed up because it's up to the developer and the web uh, branding to decide how, where they want the columns. But they also, most of them all go in a logical way. So the first thing you see is the time of the event. Now, it's very important that all the legit, not legitimate, but all the developed calendars will give you a way to set the time to your home time because you want to have it set at your home time because you don't want to miscalculate when, when these events are going to happen. So you can set up the time. In this calendar, you can set up your notifications. Most of them today are given. And then we also have filters because. If we were to look at level one, level two, level three, and all events, we would get lost. Okay. 
So right now I filtered off and each calendar has a slightly different filtering system, but they're all pretty much do the same thing. Right now, I don't need to see data out of Iceland. I don't even need to see data out of Mexico or Norway or Romania because it doesn't affect anything that I am trading or that you're trading. You know, it doesn't affect anything on CFDs in the platform because the data is coming out. It has to be important enough that is going to affect trade. Now, if I was living in Portugal and I was trading things on the Portuguese stock exchange, okay, I would want to see data out of Portugal. But since we're all here trading CFDs that are available on the ETX platform, we don't we don't trade anything that affects the Turkish lira. We don't have anything that affects the Romanian currency. So it doesn't really affect us. Even out of Europe, which is all part of the Euro and the Eurozone, okay, the fact is no data coming out of the small countries of the Eurozone have any effect on the major assets we trade. Again, it could have some slight effect if you're trading as a share that is traded on a particular index in a particular country. But then we can isolate the type of events we want to see. So here we want to see everything because we need to know what's going on. Then we can set up what we call, they call the volatility levels. So we don't need to see the zero events, the level one events, because if we left everything on here, The event, the calendar gets way too big for us to handle. This is just tomorrow's events. If I were to look at the week's events with leaving all the ones to just for those countries, see how long the calendars, we, we just couldn't use it. It's too much data. And the fact is level one events have virtually no effect on the market because the events are rated by how important they are to the financial markets. Now, a report might be very crucial to nursing. Okay. But we don't trade anything that involves nursing. So if you were you were an HR person in nursing, that report would be very important because the government's released huge amounts of statistical data. But the fact is for the financial markets, it has no importance. So we don't need to see those pieces of data because it just gives us too much to see. So we limit it to level two and three, or top tier and the one tier below, because the lower tier data, which in this case is the orange data, can have a slight effect on the markets, where level three data usually will always have an effect on the markets. <clears throat> And a lot of times, level two data is just a sub-report of a bigger or larger report. And what we're releasing is what we call the headline numbers. These are the major sections. If you've ever looked at one of these governmental statistical reports, it goes on for pages and pages and pages and pages and pages. None of it that has anything to do really with us. You know, the jobs report breaks it down by, by city in the US, by state in the US, by age bracket. None of that's going to affect the currency market. None of it's going to affect the Forex market. None of it's going to affect commodities. Okay. Is commodities going to change, change, be any different because they, there was more 19 to 25 year olds employed and less 25 to 30 year olds employed? No. So it gives us only the headline event. So if we were to look at this calendar for the 23rd, which was yesterday, we can see we had all of these reports by Marquette. Now Marquette is a private company that re releases a lot of financial reports. They're most, like, most known for what's called PMI, this Purchasing Managers Index. Now, this is the headline report, it has a major effect on the markets. And that's why it's a level three report. And so that way we have the Marquette PMI uh, composite for September. That's where it has all of this stuff put together. And then we have the Marquette's manufacturing PMI. That is ultimately the, the most important of this report. And then we go down 
to the Marquette service report. Now, if we look on the left, okay, we see everything's affected the euro in that, but we see the flag. So the first one is Germany. These three reports were on the German economy and I, I can't see what the flag is right there. My eyes are too small. Um, oh, this is the full Eurozone. So the full Eurozone takes is calculated by adding in all the individual countries together. But we look at the full Eurozone and we look though primarily the German. German data is ultimately what shifts the Euro because Germany is the workhorse economy of the Eurozone. But this is stuff you have to learn about these events. So let's not dally on that because we want to go learn to read the calendar. So we have the time, the time of the event, the name of the event, the country and the currency that's affected. Okay. That's pretty simple stuff. We then jump all the way over to the right side and we go to the farthest right side and work our way in. Okay. We've looked at the volatility. We've looked at the other terms for it, impact importance, how it's level one, two, and three, whether you use the, what, you know, and you'll see almost every calendar's got a different way of portraying. Some uses the numbers one, two, and three, others use explanation marks. And here we have on um, investing.com, we have bullheads. Some of them, again, have the logo for the company in there. And you'll see three, oh, three logos, two logos, one logo doesn't affect anything. All, all you have to know is know whether it's high impact, low impact, medium impact. Because it's always three tier. So, like I said, we're going to come all the way over to the right. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to go to tomorrow's report. Because we want to look at stuff that hasn't happened yet. So the first thing we see all the way to the right is we see what's called the previous. This previous is whatever was that piece of information that was released on that report the last time that report occurred. So in other words, we go down to the zoo survey, which ZEW says is like great big long German name. Okay. But if we were to look at this, the last time it was released, it was a minus 37.5. <coughs> we go all the way down, we see new home sales in the US was at 0 0.365 million homes as of August. That's a lot of homes. So when you, you see an event, you know, when you look at Australia or New, New Zealand and they're releasing their home data, theirs might only be a thousand but the U.S. is huge housing market. But this helps you get it in perspective. But this is whatever happened at the last release of this report. Then we go back to the most important column. Some call it headline uh, forecast, some call it consensus. Okay, again, see investing.com calls it forecast. FX Street calls it consent, consensus. It's what the market is expecting. Now, this is one of the few places where you will see slight variations in the numbers that appear here. The reason being is nobody releases forecast or consensus. No government agency tells you this is what they expect on the report. They release the data from the report. Marquette, HSBC, ADP, don't release. So the forecasts come in various ways. Like a lot of times you'll be reading in uh, CNN or, or Bloomberg, especially Bloomberg, that the Bloomberg forecast for this report is 2.95 based on our survey of our top 10 econo economists. Well, if you're at this point paying for the Bloomberg forecast, that's the number that goes in there. Okay. 
if you're getting your forecast from Thomson Reuters or from CNN or from another financial service, okay, it doesn't tell you what financial service is offering the forecast on the, on the economics calendar because it's only an estimate. But you'll find that most of the ones that are there are pretty much the same. Maybe when you look at the big US jobs report, you'll see a slight variation. But you know, the variation between the two isn't enough to be a different, you know, to make a difference. Because again, it's just a forecast. But what happens is the markets, and this is what you have to understand, is the markets and the price of your assets adjust to the expectations of the market from that report. So in other words, if we're expecting a very big successful quarter with GDP and the markets are expecting a 3.5 GDP or 2.2% GDP, whatever it's expecting, they adjust the assets that would be affected if you're looking at gold at a price level, because this is what the markets are expecting. And I'm going to give you my example in a minute of your kids and their report card so you can understand this. Because what happens is, at this point, this is all we can do until the data is released. But most trading, you'll find, will take place ahead of the event okay? because there's many strategies that when you can see the markets adjusting to the consensus, now the consensus comes out four, five, seven days before the report is due. Okay. Now, if the markets are expecting a bad report based on the consensus, you might see gold dipping before the release. You might see the dollar going, you, you know, I'm just giving you those hypotheticals. Remember I told you before, when I specifically mentioned asset, I'm just using it as a word, not now, there are many trading strategies that when you see, say, gold dipping, you can sell gold now and buy it back right before the event happens. Okay. There's a lot of trades don't want to be in the market. Trading news events and economic events is high volatility and risky. Trading after the event is very good. Okay. But there's always the guy who's trading at the edge of the sword, and he's taking his position ahead of the event and hopes that it's going to happen you know, and the market's got volatility and he can make a lot of money. Please don't do that because you'll get stopped out most of the time. So now we have previous and consensus. Now, before we go over to the next column, what you're going to say to me is, how do I understand any of this? Well, if you go down, and I'm going to use new home sales because that's the standard major event that comes out every month. If you don't understand what it is, and all these events, almost every event either happens every week or every month. After a while, you'll know them all by heart. But again, if you click in, in any of the sites, if you click on the event, there you can have a box and a, a link, a, a way to click, and you can open up the event and it's gonna explain to you exactly what it is. The number of new home sales released by the US Census Bureau is an important measure of housing conditions. You want more information, get it over here. And if you want to see the actual event, you can click on there and actually see the actual data release. Believe me, once you've seen one of these reports, you never want to go back to them. <coughs> and they just go on and on and on. Now, each site, and this is what makes them different from one another, each site will give you charts and information about that event how it's been in the past, what assets has affected and everything else. So FX Street has some of the best informational services. So we can see the actual and deviation from the actual difference between the forecast and the actual that came out. So we can see here on this event, this was the actual, this was the consensus, and we can see the deviation each time. And we can see it is on a nice graph. Then we go to the true range. We can see the true range of how this affected by a particular currency, which helps you understand how or what a currency will react to this report. Then we can see the volatility ratio. You know, again, these are unique reports that are presented by FX Street. And then a deviation impact. And you can figure out how to use all of these charts and how to incorporate it in trading. And they get to, to give you more information. 
where if you go over to investing.com, they give you different information. If we go down here to do, 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 to new home sales and we click on it, it takes us to another page, but it has the same basic information. And they have different types of charts. They'll show us charts year to year, month over month, line and standard chart on the difference between the actual and the forecast. Well, it's the same information that was on the FX street chart. You decide which ones you like better. Okay. And which ones you want to use, or you can find other calendars. But this is what we got now. Since we're going to focus on new home sales, let's close this window. Okay. We have now, well, we're not going to focus on it because we're going to go over to events that happened already today. But you also see on here, besides economic data releases, we can see here we had the Bank of Japan speech this morning. That's going to affect the Japanese yen uh, tomorrow morning. We have the interest rate decision in the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. That's going to have an effect on New Zealand dollar, maybe a cross currency of the Australian dollar, and maybe the Canadian dollar. Okay. Then on later day, we have the non-monetary policy meeting of the ECB. All of these are major events that will affect the markets, but they're not economic events as they're not data releases. Okay. But they're very, very important. So now we have our previous and our consensus. When the event takes place, so let's go over to some events that already have happened today. And let's look at right now, the UK. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter what this event said, the event occurred. When we see on the calendar a dot like that next to the event, okay, or if we look, and it's slightly different again based on the graphic. So we see the same thing if we go over to the investing.com. But here we see a little notification, and then we see a, a red or a green. When we see something in the previous column that's either red or green or has a little highlight here, tells us it was revised. What that's telling us is the data that was released from the last report was revised. So because economic data is being filtered into these statistical agencies on a continuous basis, when they release it on the specific day, it might not be 100% accurate. So if new data comes in and from you know other reports, especially over holiday seasons and odd weeks, okay, we'll get new data. If it's significant enough to change the value, it is released, not the value of the currency, but the value of the report. It is released when the new report is released as a revi revision to the previous report. Okay. Then the first we get is the actual report from this report. So in this case, we see red and it's 2.0. Red means it's just a cue to you that the report missed its expectations. So we were expecting 2.2% in the home price indice and we only got a 2% increase. But we also had a revision the last month from 2.1 to 2.2. Okay. Why is this important? Well, first of all, whenever the market misses its expectations, it causes volatility in the markets. Okay. When we get a revision though, that could make sense out of the miss. To give you an example, I, I think it was just two years ago in the January jobs report. We had a, phenom a phenomenal jobs report in December, way beyond expectations. Same thing in November. I mean, 
if you know the U.S. jobs report, it usually comes out slightly under 200,000, 180, 160. I mean, some bad months will get 60. But the U.S. needs to create on the average a little bit less than 200,000 jobs per month. Now, we had a report of 250 or 260 like in November. December, we had like 280. Now, they affected the currency values and the asset values in the stock exchange when they were released. And they were phenomenally good. When the January report came out, it was horrid, absolutely horrid. They were expecting like 150 and they got like 36,000. That should have sent gold tumbling, should have sent the dollar tumbling, should have you know, sent the stock exchange fall. Except when you added the three quarters together, and most people look at quarters, they don't look at individual results. So the CFD market reacted very violently right away to that big miss. But when the traders had a minute to think about it and they looked at the three quarters together, were phenomenal. And the month before was so much higher than expected that adding those two months together was good. Or you could say that maybe over the holidays, people were on vacation, so they you know, were hiring now or hiring then. But it didn't get what you expected. Now, the next month after that report came out, in the February report, there was also a huge revision upward. That huge revision upward actually made the January release. If you added it back and you know, looked at the January, it actually turned out to be an all right jobs report. Because what it told us is lots of people were away on holiday in December and early January, and they didn't send in the data fast enough to the reporting agencies. So the reporting agencies reported what they had but when it all caught up, it all bounced out. So revisions are very important. So you have to keep that in mind. So these are the basic pieces of information. Now, how do we put this together? Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you a story about your kids and their report cards. Let's go back to my PowerPoint. Okay, so let's talk about your kids and their report cards. If you think of the economic events as a report card of the economy, you're sitting down on Sunday dinner and you're sitting with your wife or your husband or whatever your spouse is and your two kids and you say to your son, hey kiddo, report cards are coming on Wednesday. He says, yeah, I know dad. Now, Dad says, well, how do you think you did? Well, the first thing he says, remember, Mom and Dad, last semester I brought you home four C's and four C pluses. They said, yep. So what was that? That was the previous. Now, you trust your son. He's a good kid. He's pretty honest. And you say to him, well, kiddo, how do you think you did this report? He said, you know, Mom and Dad, I think I did all right in class. I think I'm going to bring you home all C pluses. Well, Dad says he's not a genius, but he's not so bad either. But, you know, you have to do the parental stuff. You know, you lecture him about getting better grades to get into college. You lecture him about less time on Facebook and social media and more, less time with games, spending a little bit more time cracking the books. But this forecast is simply a forecast. And the data on the economics calendar is straight data. You know, you didn't go back and talk to the teachers. You didn't go to the principal. You didn't find out if they started using a different grading system. You didn't find out where he stood compared to the rest of his classmates. Didn't care at the moment. It's just data. And that's what the economics counter is. The economics counter doesn't make any analysis. It just reports data to you. Now, he comes home with his report card on Wednesday. 
and he hands it to you, and he runs right out the back door to play soccer with his buddies. You open up the envelope, and your little boy turns out to be a genius. He brought you home all bees. You're thrilled to death. You get on the phone and call your spouse and tell him, guess what? Johnny brought home all bees. Wow. So you go back into the kitchen, you turn off the stove, you open up the back door and holler out to Johnny. Guess what, Johnny? You did so well. Your dad and I are going to take you to the mall. You can buy whatever you want in the sporting goods store. You get that soccer ball you were looking at. And then we're going to take you to McDonald's for dinner and you can get whatever you want. Because you know it's his favorite place. Okay. Why? Because the record card was much better than you expected. Because okay. if Johnny would have told you on Sunday, he thought he got all B's, you would have had your heart set on all B's. So when he brought you home all B's, you wouldn't have had much of a reaction. You would have been happy. You would have been, you know, patted him on his head. But you wouldn't have been very surprised because you were expecting it. Now, the fact is, you turn off the stove, you, you know, you tell your husband you'll meet him at the mall, and you're almost ready to leave with Johnny when the soccer ball comes smashing through the picture window on the side of the house, smashes all the glass. There's glass all over the living room, and now you're hollering out the door yelling at Johnny because you told Johnny a hundred times not to play soccer on that side of the house. So you say, hey, kiddo, get in here and clean up the glass. There goes McDonald's. There goes the mall. You call your husband on the phone and say, call the handyman because we've got to get this, this window boarded up and call the glass people. And this is what happens in the markets. As fast as one event comes out that can be good, you can get another event on the calendar that's coming out a half hour later that is awful. Okay. So there, you, you have to keep in mind when those events are being released, what other events are happening, what other market information is going on. But this is what it is. It's a report card, and it's the reaction based on your expectations. And having these expectations, we can judge what we call market neutral, what we can call market negative, and what we call market positive. Okay. Now, this takes a little bit more time of learning the calendar and the skills. But say, hypothetically, for the jobs report, we were expecting from consensus 200,000 jobs. So we need to say, okay, around this 200,000 job figure, how much do we think will cause no market reaction? Well, for our class tonight, okay, we're going to estimate if it comes in better than 180 and before 210, we're not going to see much market reaction. It's market neutral because we got to have enough of a reaction to offer us a trading scenario. Okay. So in between those ranges, now how do we get those ranges? We went back and looked historically where it was, what the average was. We did some research. But because this event is listed on the calendar way ahead of time, we have time to do our research. We have time to find out because one of the few things that we can depend on is this event being released at the time it said. And then we want to determine, okay, if that's going to happen and this is going to be when it's released, we can then judge what that event is causing in the market. So we could say if that jobs report came in between 180 and 210, it offered us no potential trades because it was market neutral. But we said if it comes out less than 180, that becomes a very weak report because we were expecting 200,000. So we would look at a market negative approach where the, the assets that would have been supported by this job will fall. And we can say anything over 210 would become market positive. So if the jobs report comes out better than 210, 
we would expect a jump and a little rally in the stock market. We'd expect a jump in the dollar value. We'd see a decrease in gold. Possibly. But this is telling us what we can expect on specific assets at specific times. What we would expect the market to do. Now, granted, the housing market job and the, the housing market report okay, could show a weak weakening U.S. economy, okay. and it could have a bigger effect though on stock for say Home Depot, you know, because Home Depot supplies housing and building materials, and if the housing market's slowing down, okay, it could have a direct effect on Home Depot stock or on builder stocks, okay, as opposed to Maybe it doesn't have an effect on the overall stock market, but it could have a direct effect on particular stocks. So we have to understand what the relationship is from one event to the next to the next. And it takes a little bit of studying, but it, it's, it all wraps around of being a report card on the economy and what sections are, are doing well, which aren't, and how they all end up leading to the Federal Reserve raising or decreasing rates, and how these reports all tell you. So if you start to learn the economics count, you'll find out things like housing data in the U.S. is multi-pronged. There's, there's four reports released a month. They'll tell you, you know, first we have, how, we have housing sales, we have pending home sales, then we have new home sales, then we have closing sales, we have what we call building permits. So once a house is sold, you know, there's a contract on it. It's not the sale hasn't been completed. And it's a new home sale. The builders, when he's ready to, to start building, you know, because maybe it's got a way for planning, it's got a way for architects. You know, but when he's ready to start building, he pulls the building permit. Okay. So that, when he pulls the building permit, that's going to help us get to new home sales and from there to the housing market. So everything has a step and one thing predicts the other. And all of it wraps around to have an effect on central banks. If you understand how manufacturing data also incorporates in their manufacturing hiring. So that helps you predict what the jobs reports can do because the manufacturing is weak and you look in that re sub reports and see that hiring in the manufacturing sector was off. That's gonna tell you that there's a good chance that the jobs report could be missing. So you have to learn how all of these events wrap together. But when you do, you can start making some trading sense out of this way. Now, a lot of us refer to this as trading the news. Trading the news is slightly different. That's trading a speech from Donald Trump. But these are still economic events. We could retitle it just trading economic news. And there are many different strategies can, that can be applied. So the most common way to, to trade news is to look for a period of consolidation ahead of the big number for the release and to just trade the breakout on the, the back of the big number. This can be done both for short-term interday traders and for daily basis. Okay. Trading news can be very profitable if you can correctly guess which way the price is going to move. Price can often move 40 or 30 or 40 pips very quickly on big news releases. But knowing which way it's going to move is very much a gamble. So most traders do not trade the news as it's just too risky. And you too often get stopped out as price moves one way and then the other. Most traders have experienced this whipsaw effect when price goes down and it goes very down very quickly and then turns around and goes back up. So. It seems no matter which way you trade, you can always get stopped out. So the best way is to first build your trading matrix. Okay, Learn what to expect and how to rate it. Okay, Build your market neutral, market negative <laughs> effects. And then determine how you're going to trade. Some trades you want to do before the event. Some trades you want to wait till after the event, but you want to wait till after the volatilities come out of the market. Sometimes you want to trade, wait for it to hit that very top after the release or the very bottom, because you know, even if the market news is very bad or very good, it's not going to have a very long-term effect. So when you see the market news come out and the euro flies way, way high, 
maybe you just sell it at the top of its peak because it's still going to find its new level and it's going to come down. So there are many different strategies you can apply, but understanding how these events affect all the interconnected markets, like I said, the jobs, uh, the housing data could have a direct effect on the value of Home Depot. So maybe you want to look at an individual share to trade. You know, in the UK, we have, you know, PMIs. Every country is releasing data. Okay. So trading the economics calendar isn't so difficult, but understanding and using the economics calendar is vitally important because forget the economic event. Forget a central bank meeting. Forget that Mario Draghi is making a speech. You did all of your analysis, no matter how you trade, and you're going to trade the euro. You've decided the euro has fallen to its bottom. You looked at, you know, however you did it. You looked at support and resistance. You got an indecision candle. You, you did whatever you did. Okay. And you decided you're going to go in the market and buy the euro. Okay. So you're going to make a trade uh, for the euro to go up. You're going to buy it at 116 or 108, and you're going to sell it when it hits 108.50. This is what you determine. But the fact is you didn't look at the economics count and realize that you open your trade a half hour before Mario Draghi is going to make a speech. Now, his speech could have no real effect on the value of the euro. But while he's speaking, he's going to be creating <laughs> volatility. And what happens is you were completely right. At the, you know, Two hours later, the euro is trading at 108.50, and you could have made tons of money. But because you didn't realize there was a major event on the calendar, you opened your trade at the wrong time because the calendar sparked unknown volatility into the markets, which you couldn't take into effect when you set your stop loss because you didn't realize that there was something that was going to create or affect the market volatility. It didn't affect the price, just affected short-term volatility, and you got stopped out in the middle of that event. Where, if you knew that event was going to take place, you could have waited until a half hour after a speech and then opened up your trade at 108 when the markets got back to normal and closed it later in the day when it hit 108.50. But you lost your opportunity and you ended up turning a smart analysis into a losing trade because you didn't look at the economics calendar. So that's a little bit of information about the economics calendar. But you need to go learn how all of these events interact and put together in what we call fundamental analysis. And once you understand why one event affects the next event, not just that they're sparking volatility in the market, but how you can predict what you can expect from that event based on understanding previous events might help you make smart trading decisions and give you a better understanding of the markets. And on that note, I'm gonna say good night to everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. And we'll talk to you again. And thank you for being part of the ETX family. Good night now.